Hello and welcome to Crosstalk. I'm Peter Laveau. America's love affair with drones. The use of unmanned drone attacks has surged during the Obama presidency. Proponents of this weapon claim they are precise, safe for American military personnel, and with limited collateral damage. Critics disagree. Drones are immoral, illegal, and generate unnecessary blowback. To crosstalk America's growing affection towards drones, I'm joined by Bill Roggio in Philadelphia. He's a commentator on military affairs and managing editor of the Long War Journal. In Geneva, we have Jean Myro. She is the president of the International Association of Democratic Lawyers. And in London, we cross to Chris Woods. He is a journalist with the Bureau of Investigative Journalism. All right, folks, crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want. Jean, if I can go to you first in Geneva, is the use of drones and, and, uh, and media coverage lately has shown that Obama uses them quite often, a lot more than George W. Bush did. Is it making America a safer place? Absolutely not. I think every time we use a drone, we're creating 10 more people who uh, have some desire to hate us or to try to do some, uh, uh, when I say us, I am American, uh, hate uh, the U.S. and to and to try to take some action against uh, the, uh, uh, in the United States. Okay, Jean, if I can uh, stay... So I, I don't think it helps at all. Okay, if I can but stay... I, the I can, main thing is that it's illegal. Okay, okay, we'll get to that point here. <laughs> They're illegal. But you know, but I mean, Obama, okay. Obama loves to point out, the Pentagon loves to point out, or I should say the CIA, oh, we got another one, we got another one, and it makes the papers and people are quite impressed. I mean, you know, Mr. Obama is not soft on the security, is he? Is that one of the messages do you think he's sending right now? I think that's the purpose for why he is doing it. I think that's one of the purposes, uh, in fact, uh, uh, in the United States, the, the issue of whether or not Democrats are considered strong on national defense and security is one of the issues that's always played uh, well for Republicans. And so showing this macho image and the image of, of, of uh, I'm going to stand up to and kill these terrorists uh, or whoever we call terrorists. Uh, is uh, being it was I think it was being it was leaked in order to uh, mm. uh, make him appear stronger, not uh, not uh, weaker. And and frankly, um, you know, there's some there's a lot of uh, um, in in relate or in opposition to invading a country, uh, you know, doing a targeted. Uh, okay, uh, you're saying you're saying this is, is a security better, policy on not. the cheap. Uh, Chris, if I can go to you in London, a lot of the information that was leaked, to, I guess, was leaked to you guys because uh, reading your, your work is quite fascinating. Uh, is this, you know, why are they, you know, spoon feeding the media? Every once in a while, they'll say something. Of course, this is the most secret program in America, but at the same time, they kind of want to brag about it. And from your research and your writing, it looks like they're quite proud of what they're doing. There's very little that's secret about the, 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 this covert war in Pakistan and Yemen in particular, true. except that the Obama administration would like to keep aspects of it secret, the difficult bits, the awkward bits. It's absolutely clear that these drones are killing uh, alleged terrorists, although they're not getting, they're not getting trials, they're not, they're not being held, uh, they're simply being killed. But we also know that a large number of civilians, unfortunately, have also been killed in Pakistan and in Yemen and in Somalia. And unfortunately, the American media in particular is very bad at reporting those deaths. It reports when the big guys are killed. It's a little uh, problematic for the American media when it comes to reporting civilian deaths. And that's part of the problem now, because Obama's become more and more reliant on these drones as a tool of foreign policy, built around this fiction that they're the most precise weapon ever invented and they're not killing civilians. Well, we simply know that's not true. Well, Chris, if I can stay with you here, I mean, the administration defends that, you know, when these drones are used, if any male, uh, adult male in the vicinity is considered a militant or a legitimate target. I mean, again, this is, this is really pushing the, the limit of, uh, of using a weapon here. I mean, what about women and children? We do know about funerals where women and children have been killed. And, and mm -hmm. the, these, when they're, these drones are sent, we know it is a funeral. Well, the, the, the CIA and, and national U.S. intelligence uh, officials have indicated that they think no more than 60 civilians have been killed in almost 10 years of bombing in this campaign. I and mean, that's ludicrous. It's absolutely not the case at all. We've identified around 175 children killed uh, just in Pakistan. And we think the number of civilians killed in Pakistan, uh, as a minimum, is just under 500. 
Uh, and maybe as high as 800. There are huge numbers of people. We simply don't know their identity. We don't know their status. And for the, the US to continually claim that it's not killing civilians is simply untrue. I, I think it's wrong, and they, need, they do need to be held to account for this. Okay, Bill, what do you think? Is this strategy working? Yeah, you know, this is a... The, I, I absolutely agree. The Obama administration is, is making political hay out of these drone strikes. It, it allows it to project itself as being strong on terrorism, but it's really a stopgap. Um, it's, it's a cheat uh, to, uh, in order for them not to make hard choices, which is to actually get, in the case of Pakistan, to control its own territory or do something about it itself. And I believe me, I don't advocate the U.S. invading Pakistan's tribal areas. However, the reality is, is these are lawless areas where these strikes are occurring, and the Pakistani government is either unwilling or unable to to, a, to go after the individuals that are being targeted in these strikes. And these, uh, th these are areas where plots are being, uh, uh, being hatched against not just the United States or Europe, but against Pakistan, Afghanistan, um, and, other, and other places, India. So, you know, the, the idea that we could just, you know, conduct lawfare and go in there and arrest these people, you know, that, you know, that they deserve a trial first, you know, that, this is the, the real problem with this, with the drone program or with the U.S. strategy, period, is that it's not defining this war. It's not, defi it's not going after the root causes, radical ideology, and state sponsorships of terrorism. So the drone strikes are keeping al-Qaeda, to answer your question, they're keeping al-Qaeda off balance. But what they're not doing is they're not allowing us to... Uh, to hit al-Qaeda where it hurts. That's state sponsorship of terrorism. That's its radical ideology and its ability to exploit the uh, ungoverned spaces. So all this is is a stopgap. It keeps them from, well, from I mean, hitting us, I, but I, it, it will could, not cause a defeat. If I go to Gene here, way, I, this will, I, this I think what it does is it creates a lot of blowback. Gene, if I can go to you, it creates a lot of blowback, doesn't it? I mean, if it doesn't work, it's not effective, but they continue to and, do and it. I do agree that it does create blowback. There's no question that it, it creates blowback. And, you know, I, I know that uh, uh, I think Bob just sort of poo pooed uh, trials and, and arrest and detention as being, uh, as being unrealistic, but it, it's highly realistic. Uh, that's what we have international police for. That's what we have uh, uh, even uh, the uh, potential for. Well, you're going to go into North Waziristan, where the Taliban openly control these areas. Well, let me let me say this. Pakistan they're, won't govern its own territories. North and South Waziristan are no go zones. That's you not know, true. Who is going to go in there and ask them? Let me let Chris, Chris, and Chris, in in Chris in London jump in. Chris in London jump in. Go ahead. I'm just saying that the, the, the Pakistan military is there in, in the federal tribal areas and is fighting uh, with these groups. Pakistani soldiers die every day, and, and Bill well yeah, knows, and particularly in the early days out. after 9-11, just to say, Bill, after the early days of 9-11, U.S. and Pakistani intelligence worked very well together, apprehended large numbers of al-Qaeda, rolled them up very tightly. The issue is who these drones are targeting, and your own data on your excellent website, Bill, shows most of these drone strikes are not against al-Qaeda, they're actually against militant groups that have peace deals with Pakistan that are fighting an insurgency but, across the border. And that's what this is really about. Al-Qaeda are practically destroyed. And drones have helped to do uh, but that. The but movement they are of the a Taliban very in marginal Pakistan, presence now. Uh, Bill, go what ahead. What about the Times Square but, bombing, Chris? How do, you, how do you talk about the Times Square bombing with, when Faisal Shazad And the Times Square bombing was carried out by the, the TTP bill. the movement of the Taliban in Pakistan, uh, yeah. not, not Al-Qaeda. And... The, and uh, it certainly was. And you know why the TTP said yeah, they carried so out the Times Square bombing? They said it was are, in answer to agree. drone strikes. The problem Bill. is, is it's not a, yeah. these groups that we're attacking. All right, Jane, you want to jump yeah. in in Geneva? And Let's go TTP to Jane. Yeah, it's fair is, time, gentlemen. Answer, Jane in Geneva. Also go ahead. The lies with Al Qaeda and with other groups. Go ahead, Jane. You know, this, it, you know, it's one thing to start talking about the practicalities and so forth. But, you know, there is international law. There is, there is international human rights law. There's international humanitarian law. There's laws of war. And the minute that you start saying we or any one country has some kind of justification for violating that law, everybody then has a justification for violating the law. In fact, I was at the Human Rights Council today. And the, uh, the U.S. representative came down on the Syrians for targeted killing. 
and this and the reaction was how can the United States say that that the Syrians are guilty of targeting and killing when they are doing that exactly and and in fact haven't come up with any kind of justification in law I'm not talking about practicality or a, a sub, you know deciding that somebody's a bad guy and we don't like him so let's take him out but that that's not legal. If I decide somebody that I don't like that somebody or I have a strategy of counterterrorism and I think a particular person is a counter is a, a terrorist, I without some uh, way of of uh, of uh, being within international law. Okay. All right, Bill. Look, it looks like you want to reply. You can't, you can't Bill, just go do ahead. that. Jump in, Bill. I, I absolutely, I actually agree with you. I think the United States has, uh, and this administration for ramping up these strikes has not made the case either from a public standpoint or a legal standpoint as why is it's justified to do so. I do believe the U.S. is justified to do so. U.S. soldiers are being killed across the border by these groups and the U.S. homeland and, and U.S. allies are in danger for, of op, from the way these groups operated, from the way these groups operate. Except, but yes, I absolutely agree with you. The case is not being made in public and the legal case is not being made and this harms u.s credibility in the long term and this is what happens when you make a tactic of drone strikes and you take that and you substitute it for your strategy it's an absolute mess well, I, I mean i'm supportive well, of these strikes i think they should be done limited i think the u.s should be clear about who's targeted and and i think these should be transparent however i do think they are justified i think the scope of this of right. this program folks i'm going to jump we're going to go to a break i'm going to jump in here we're going to a break and after that short break we'll continue our discussion on america's excessive use of drones stay with rt Welcome back to Crosstalk. I'm Peter Lebel. To remind you, we're talking about whether America is overdoing it with the use of drones. Okay, Chris, I'd like to go back to you in London. One of the things in, in researching this, and, and I read Gene's excellent article, I thought it was very provocative and informing. One of the things, it's due process here. I mean, what gives the right, the President of the United States to say, I want this guy dead, I want this guy dead, and I mean, where is the due process? I mean, if America is, you know, invading countries around the world and bombing them to democracy, what right does it have to say, we can assassinate anyone we want and we don't have to justify it? We don't even have to tell you. There, there's we, something we really wrong know. there. And in fact, hmm. we, Michael, uh, Michael Hayden, the former director of the CIA, who, who introduced the drone strikes, the covert drone strikes back in 2004, recently said he's worried about building American foreign policy on a, on a memo locked up in a safe that no one's allowed to see. And that's the reality here. The American administration keeps telling us that these drone strikes are legal, but they won't show us the basis for that decision. And just to be clear, Pakistan, whatever private agreements it may have had with the United States, has very publicly rescinded those now. Every time the U.S. bombs Pakistan, that country is standing up and saying, please stop. This is against international law. So we now have America bombing an ally against that ally's wishes. This is a very disturbing development that the U.S. administration really isn't dealing with right now. It raises some very uncomfortable questions for all of America's allies. Bill, how do you respond I to that? The All right, I just got to go, go to Bill in Philadelphia. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I actually agree with you, Chris. I, I, I agree. This is why the case should be made. As far as Pakistan's denouncements, They've been doing this from the very beginning, saying that the U.S. doesn't have a right to do so. We all know. I mean, th but this is an absolute public relations nightmare for the United States. It feeds into Al Qaeda's propaganda. It feeds into anti-American. Bill, Bill, let me ask you a question. Let, let me ask you a question, Bill. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Pakistan, it, let me ask you a question. I mean, what? How can you make a legal case absolutely. for this? I mean, under international law, is there a legal case for the use of drones the way the U.S. is using them now? Do you think there is a case? I do think there is a case. I think that, you know, this is a continuation of the threat uh, that the U.S. has faced uh, against uh, from, from terrorist groups that began prior to 9-11. These groups are operating and plotting to attack the United States as well as kill U.S. soldiers in, uh, in Afghanistan. And I, I, I believe that the case can be made legally. I've, I've spoken to someone who is, who is an expert on this, and he has made the case for it. 
And, um, you know, so, yeah, I do believe the case can be made. They just, the administration won't. And I, and I think that this is wrong. This goes all, you know, the problem goes all the way back to the Bush administration, which really wanted to, the people to not understand why we're at war and wanted us to go shopping instead of the yeah. Bush administration, that is, you know, go shopping and, and the adults. <laughs> yeah, but it looks like the Obama administration the is on steroids later, right now when it comes to drones. Gene, go ahead and jump in from Geneva. There, go there's ahead. something there's more something more fundamental than that. And and one is the, the first thing is that after nine eleven uh, the, the, the paradigm was we were having a war on a tactic. We were having a war on terror. And that it put, totally changed the frame from th that terrorism is, an, is, in fact, a criminal act. And we have to look at it and look at these people in terms of criminals. And what do we do if people are criminals? We try to get information about them. We try to, we try to arrest them. We, if, they're, if they're engaging in illegal act, whether it's conspiracy, etc., you can arrest them and detain them and try them and put them in jail. But that was not the, the, the way in which um, the, the uh, administration wanted to look at it. We wanted to declare war on a tactic. And so what's, what's happened now is that, that if you look at international law, and, and you start from the perspective of the UN Charter, which says you really cannot, you're supposed to engage in, the United States and all other countries are supposed to solve their international disputes uh, uh, peacefully, even including non-state actors. And you need to be able to work with uh, um, countries where non-state actors are 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 are, uh, are being uh, maybe uh, held or, or being uh, um, uh, housed or or protected by some portions of the government, but you need to be able to make that case, make it internationally, and just think of what would have happened as instead of instead of the 10 years ago, us invading, the U.S. invading Afghanistan, there was a real push to actually arrest and detain the people who had planned 9-11. Well, I think, I think the UN Jane, that wouldn't, be that. that wouldn't be sexy enough for, I think, a lot of politicians here. Chris, if I can go to you, I mean, but, how, but, no, no, let, let me, me go to Chris here in, in London. Sure, you know, sure. I think it's really, it's interesting that they don't want to talk too much about this because these are, are precise weapons, but they still kill a lot of other people here. And that's the issue they really don't want to address. The, 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 the CIA made the extraordinary claim last year, which, which went unchallenged by the US media, disgracefully for six months, that they hadn't killed a single civilian in Pakistan. Well, of course, that's not true. Overall, these covert drone strikes, we think there have been around 300 in three countries now that have killed at least 3,000 people. We're talking about an industrial scale killing machine here. And what happens on one side of the border in Afghanistan, you have NATO strikes governed by the laws of war. It's accountable. There's a process. If things go wrong, they admit it. The moment those drones cross over the border, chasing the same people and kill them, no accountability, no transparency. We're not even allowed to know what laws the US thinks it can carry out these attacks on. So, so the idea that, that no civilians are being killed, the fiction, uh, is, is becoming part of the problem. And of course, the blowback that you mentioned at the beginning in Pakistan and Yemen and Somalia now, people who are against Al-Qaeda, absolutely detest and loathe Al-Qaeda, are also now coming to hate the United States because of this policy. That is not a successful foreign policy. Okay, Chris, I want to stay with you because you said something really important. There was no comment for a half a year that no uh, uh, civilians were killed in these uh, drone attacks. Why isn't it that media in the West won't report on these? Why are they not interested or it's taboo? What, what's, what's going on here? It's not, it, it, you know, it's not that the media in the West isn't interested. In fact, our experience, and I'm sure Bill's found similar, the agencies, the good, reputable agencies on the ground do get the details of civilian deaths at the time, and they're often reported internationally. Unfortunately, there's a firewall around the mainstream U.S. media. They'll report the militant leaders killed, they won't report the civilians killed. And that's led, I think, the United States public to think, well, these drones are fine. There's no problem. They only kill militants. Well, of course, that's not true. And all the time, you're getting people angrier and angrier in Yemen and Somalia and Pakistan because civilians are dying and they're being told, no, you're not civilians. Uh, so there's this disconnect between what the international media is reporting and what the mainstream U.S. media is reporting, and that's a big problem. Bill, I mean, the, one of the reasons why drones are popular with the, the Obama people is because, it, you know, it's, it's a war that, you know, Americans don't die, 
end? Okay. It's all electronic. It's being, who knows, it's at Langley doing all these things, the CIA. I mean, it's a great way to run a war where you don't have American casualties, is it? And probably on the cheap, too, in a way. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're correct. It's a war on the cheap. You don't threaten the lives of U.S. soldiers are not at risk. That's, I mean, the reality is uh, that that's why they're being used. We don't want to use, lose a, a U.S. pilot over Pakistan. And look at how, you know, and again, this is where I really agree with Chris and Jean. Look at how the U.S. responds to these or, or how the administration responds to these. They've sold the U.S. media that these are the answer. This is the way to defeat Al Qaeda. Look, all we need to do is kill Al Qaeda leaders and Al Qaeda will be done. The, the, the media mocked President Bush when he did this in 2002 and 2004 and 2006, and they're right on board because, top, because access is given to top levels of the U.S. National uh, Security Council to, to media personalities, and so they're basically eating what, what, the, uh, what, the, what people like Brennan and, and others tell them. And that's, that is why there is very little critical eye in the U.S. media given to this program. And, and it, look, it, I believe the last uh, polls were like 82% of the American public supports the drone program. I, I, you know, of course the administration is going to do this. It's a political winner. It makes them look tough, and it allows them to, to, to say they wanted to, that they're able to defeat al-Qaeda and, and allows them to do what they want to do, which is disengage from Afghanistan and basically disengage from the Middle East and fight a war on the cheap. Okay, Gene, you want to jump in there? Yeah, what I really, I, what Chris said about, uh, well, if it's a militant, that's okay. I mean, what's a militant? Who's a militant? Who defines who's a militant? There, are, Sometimes I'm pretty militant about uh, <laughs> uh, things I believe in passionately. And I mean, I don't think I should be subject to a drone strike. But, you know, the, the, this, this, is a real, this is a real problem in terms of, uh, of the due process aspect about this. Plus, the whole the whole rubric is one that that has been developed to the extent there's a legal analysis as i understand it that this is in the rubric of self-defense that we have to take these actions to defend ourselves against people who are plotting against us i mean if you took that on the street in new york or some other city and you said oh i think that person over there is uh is uh plotting to uh, to get me and you just took out a gun and shot them you could not, you you would not be able to say that was in self defense. You know, self defense. It, it, let me go, is, let me go to Chris in London. Is, I mean, this is one of the things about the drone warfare that's quite interesting is that well, you don't have to be accountable for who you killed because you don't have to say who they are, do you? And you you would even have to give them a and name. Fact, we, yeah, yeah, and and most of the people we we've named in our data, we think around 500 people killed. About 180 of those are militants, and around 320 are civilians. The other 2,000 minimum killed, we, in Pakistan alone this is, we don't know who they are. And I'm pretty sure the CIA doesn't know who they're killing either because of these so-called signature strikes. So the, the, if you're killing large numbers of people and you actually don't know who they are, how can you then talk about success of a policy? Who are you killing and what are the implications of that uh, for policy uh, in terms of moving forward? I think that's a, that's a big problem. Bill, are, are the drones killing the right, the right people? I think by and large they are. Um, you know, the, uh, when you kill a bunch of males that are hanging around Abu Yahya al Libby, who do we really think they are? Yeah, we may not know their names, but it's very likely they're their bodyguards, they're their aides. Right, we've and a run lot out of, of time, folks. Of Fascinating discussion. I'm sure we can talk Look, about it one thing for a much longer time. Many thanks to my guests today in Philadelphia, Geneva, and in London. And thanks to our viewers for watching us here, RT. See you next time, and remember, Crosstalk Rules.